You're going to go listen to that wacko again? Everything on Earth will perish. Everything? You don't think this will ruin their friendship, do you? <laughs> Ruining their friendship over some story? Hi, Miss Jean. Join me on a trip to Discovery Mountain, where the air is clear, clear enough to hear your imagination, and where every day is an exercise in faith. Join me for today's expedition. It's a new morning in Discovery Mountain, but one thing has not changed. It is still raining. And that's a problem. Because of all that rain, there was a mudslide at Discovery Mountain Academy. The mudslide damaged the playground and Mrs. Lewis's classroom. And today, it's causing chaos a little further away at the Beckman House. Let's join Jenna and her family in today's episode called Animal Ark. What's all that noise? <sighs> Your dad's reorganizing the garage. It's already organized. We're the only people I know who can actually park their cars in the garage. He said he needs to make room for more supplies. What kind of supplies? After that blizzard and power outage a while ago, then the mudslide yesterday, your dad said we need to be better prepared for emergencies. But mom, dad already bought every battery, candle, and first aid kit Trekkers had. And so much canned food, we could survive a snowpocalypse. <laughs> so what's he making room for? Glad you asked. You can never be too prepared, so... I've ordered a year's supply of emergency food bars, a camp stove, a CB radio, and the Defender X-5000. Defender what? The Defender X-5000. Just the best, most powerful generator out there. That baby could power the whole neighborhood. It's arriving this afternoon. Steve, how much did that cost? What's peace of mind worth, Amy? Buying a generator that big doesn't seem to make sense. Mm, you're right. I should have bought two. Mom, I just need to grab my backpack and I'll be ready to leave for school. Okay, I'll meet you at the car. Steve, we'll talk more after I get back from this morning school assembly program. You're going to go listen to that wacko again? He's not a wacko. He's an archaeologist. He's the mud guy. Does that sound like a serious archaeologist to you? Well, he seemed to know what he was talking about. He was talking about a guy who supposedly built a boat big enough to save all the animals in the world. I'm actually surprised you don't want to learn more about Noah. Why is that? Noah spent 120 years preparing to survive a worldwide disaster. That means he was the ultimate prepper. <laughs> You two would have had a lot in common. The Beckmans aren't the only ones feeling the stress because of the mudslide. The teachers and students at Discover Mountain Academy are feeling pretty anxious, too. Natasha, have you seen Rich yet? Oh, oh, never mind. There he is. That's not Rich. It's Jake. But, but he... <laughs> Jake wore his mud guy hat today. Oh. Okay, I'll, I'll keep looking then. Morning, Hannah. Ready for class in the gymnasium today? I think so. Say, I wanted to thank you again for taking my class yesterday. <sighs> no problem. I just hope I don't have to do it again anytime soon. Dealing with the mudslide must have been terrible. <laughs> the mudslide was easy compared to managing Luke and Lily. Do they always fight so much? I found ways to help them with their twin rivalry. You are a more patient teacher than I am. <laughs> I don't know. Today's going to be a hard day. The mudslide was scary. It sure was. And teaching in the gym instead of the classroom? My students don't respond well to changes in their schedules. <laughs> Never mind this. Maybe it won't be so bad. Luke, you made me drop my book! Sorry. No, you're not. You did it on purpose. 
Natasha, are you sure you don't want to suffer me today? <laughs> Gotta go. See ya. Good morning, students and staff. Remember, we're beginning our day in the gym for an assembly. You won't want to miss the mud guy. Hurry to the gym. All right, all right. As soon as everyone gets settled, we'll start. Carson, do you have a pencil? Uh, yeah, Brianna. Here you go. Thanks. I forgot my recorder. I need to take notes. <laughs> You're really into all this Noah stuff, aren't you? That's awesome, Brianna. Aren't you amazed how much evidence there is for the flood? Reporters stay neutral, Cyrus. Neutral? You mean you don't believe in Noah's flood? I haven't formed an opinion. But how can you ignore all the evidence? Hey, guys, stop arguing. <sighs> Sorry, Addison. We're just having a discussion. Sounded like an argument to me. Okay, okay Rich, I think, I think we, we can, can begin. begin. Thanks, I yes. Good, Good morning, everyone. Rich, look! I'm wearing my mud guy hat! <laughs> and you've got the right attitude now, Jake. I have a question. Oh, a question already? Uh, what's, what's your name? Lily. Okay, Lily, uh, what's, what's your question? question? You said Noah saved all the animals, right? Right. How did he round up all the animals in the whole world? He'd have to walk to Australia just to get two kangaroos. Well, let's see what the Bible says. Here it is in Genesis 6. Now, the earth was corrupt in God's sight and full of violence. So God said to Noah, As only happens in Discovery Mountain, when Rich read the Bible verse, the students could almost hear it in their imagination. Can you hear God and Noah's conversation? I'm going to put an end to all people, for the earth is filled with violence because of them. I'm surely going to destroy both them and the earth. Lord, you're going to do what? I have seen how great the wickedness of the human race has become. Their every thought is evil. I regret that I ever made them. But you, Noah, have found favor in my eyes. I have followed you all my days. I want you to make yourself an ark of wood. An ark, Lord? Make rooms in the ark and cover it inside and out with pitch. Make a roof and put in a window 18 inches from the top. Put the door of the ark in its side. Make it with lower, second, and third decks. All you have asked of me, I will do. I am about to cover the earth with a flood that will destroy every living thing that breathes. Everything on earth will perish. Everything? But I will confirm my covenant with you. So enter the boat, you and your wife and your sons and their wives. Whoa, I love it when that happens. Lily, wasn't that awesome? It certainly wasn't how I always imagined it. Mr. Mud Guy? Uh, yes, Lily? That still doesn't answer my question. How did Noah round up all the animals? Well, let's keep reading, Lily. The answer is in verse 20. Noah, listen carefully. Pairs of every kind of bird and every kind of animal and every kind of small animal that scurries along the ground will come to you to be kept alive. My family loves your creatures, Lord. We shall faithfully care for them all. You must take with you every kind of food that is eaten and store it up. It shall serve as food for you and for them. Everything you have commanded, we will do. Did you catch that, Lily? Pairs of every animal will come to you. So Noah didn't have to go to Australia, did he? Nope. The animals came to him. How is that even possible? Well, the short answer is because God told them to. Even today, we see animals travel incredible distances when they migrate. It's instinctual. Like when birds fly south for the winter. Exactly. For example, Arctic terns, they fly nearly 56,000 miles every year. And they live up to 30 years. So during their lifetime, they travel the equivalent of going to the moon and back more than three times. Butterflies migrate a long way too, don't they? Yes. Monarch butterflies migrate 3,000 miles. And they tracked one that flew 265 miles in one day. But what about the animals that can't fly? 
Well, land animals could easily have made it to the ark. I mean, every year, some zebras migrate 300 miles in just two or three weeks. And you might not think of elephants as being fast, but they can travel 35 miles a day. But how can Noah fit millions of animals in the ark? He didn't. I rest my case. Oh, well, people think there must have been millions of animals because there are millions of species today. But God didn't tell Noah to take two of every species. He said, kinds. That's the same thing. No, it isn't. You see, a dog is a kind. And Noah didn't need every species of dog on the ark. Just one pair of the canine kind. Does that make sense? Take it from a science teacher. That pair of dogs had all the possible DNA combinations for all the possible kinds of dogs we see today. Coyotes, wolves, dingoes. Even poodles? <laughs> yes, Mia, unfortunately. Hey, Carson, that means German shepherds, too. <laughs> So, how many total animals were there? Well, some experts think that there were 10 to 20,000 individual animals. And remember, most animal kinds are fairly small. And it's logical to think that God would have sent younger animals to Noah. Why? Well, juveniles would be smaller, eat less, and be easier to manage. Right. And what we can know for sure is that there was plenty of room on the ark for all of them. I have another question. <laughs> Go ahead, Lily. Rich, let's give the students a quick break before you tackle another of Lily's questions. <laughs> okay, kids. You heard the principal. It's time for a break. We're going to take a little break, too. We'll be right back. Would you like to share your faith with Discovery Mountain merch? There are t-shirts, hoodies, and even a ball cap to choose from. Visit discoverymountain.com slash store and get your merch today. Take an adventure with your friends in Discovery Mountain in the book, Mission Forgiveness. In this interactive faith adventure, you decide what happens next. Find Mission Forgiveness at discoverymountain.com slash store. Okay, let's get back to Noah and the flood of questions you have. Lily, you had another one. Yes, I do. What about the pitch? Uh, the pitch? It says Noah covered the ark with pitch, but everyone knows pitch comes from fossil fuel. You mean like from dead dinosaurs? Yeah, so where did the pitch come from if the dinosaurs weren't dead yet? Well, people have used other sources of pitch for centuries. For example, they used to seal ships with pine tree resin. So Noah didn't need fossil fuels. Make sure you put that in your notes, Brianna. I'm noting everything that's important, Cyrus. Speaking of fossils, I have one to show you. What are fossils? Dead things. <laughs> fossils are the remains of living things that are preserved in rocks. This is coprolite. Anyone want to hold it? I do. Well, come on up here, young man. Wow, this is so cool. Harold, do you know what a coprolite is? Of course I do, Mia. It's a fossil. Yes, a fossilized dinosaur dropping. <laughs> a what? <laughs> Maybe we should stick to the pictures of fossils. Check this one out. Is that a flower? It's a fossilized jellyfish. What do you know about jellyfish? They live in the ocean. Right. They're squishy. Right again. This jellyfish is evidence that Noah's flood was real. It is? How? Well, in order to turn into a fossil, this jellyfish had to be buried in mud really fast. Why did it have to be fast? Because otherwise it would have quickly decayed, with nothing left to leave an impression. Here's another fossil picture. That's a fish. It is. Well, or at least it used to be. It's an ichthyosaur fossil. Ick is right. It's hideous. <laughs> ichthyosaur means fish lizard. And they look kind of like modern dolphins. Dolphins are way cuter than that. <laughs> Maybe, but you notice how detailed it is? You can see eyes and fins and everything. And if it wasn't buried rapidly, those details would have been lost. But most important is where it was found. At the bottom of the ocean? Nope, on top of a mountain. Really? 
A mountain? That's right. Either this ichthyosaur was an excellent mountain climber, or at some point, an awful lot of water covered the mountain it was found on. It could never rain hard enough to cover a mountain with water. Right again, Lily. There wasn't enough rain. So I'm right. It wasn't just rain, though. Listen to these verses in Genesis 7. In the 600th year of Noah's life, on that day, all the fountains of the great deep burst forth, and the windows of the heavens were opened. The rain fell on the earth for 40 days and 40 nights. On that very day, Noah and his sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, together with his wife and the wives of his three sons, entered the ark. The waters swelled up mightily on the earth, that all the high hills under the whole heaven were covered the waters swelled above the mountains. The waters flooded the earth for 150 days. Father, where have you been? Your mother needed help cleaning up the terrapin enclosure. <sighs> Maintaining animal pens is a never-ending chore, isn't it, Shem? Boy, it sure is. Speaking of never-ending, has God told you how much longer we'll be afloat? Shem, we knew this wouldn't be easy. Being cooped up like this is hard on all of us, man and animal alike. We must be patient. Yes, but Father, it's been nearly five months. I know, son, but the waters are no longer rising. Surely that means we are near the end, or at least nearer. When God said it would rain for 40 days, I guess I expected everything would be over after that but the water just kept rising. I'm still not sure where it all came from. I have to admit, I was a bit frightened. We all were, Shem. But God protected us, didn't he? Yes, he did, Father. And we must trust that he's with us still, no matter how much longer we must be aboard this boat. Yes, Father. When you and Japheth were designing the food storage systems, you know, I thought for sure you were stockpiling far more than we'd ever need. <laughs> so did your mother. Well, it's a good thing you didn't listen to us, or we would have run out of food months ago. A good thing indeed. Our meals may be simple, but God has provided. And speaking of meals, it smells like something's cooking. Maybe lentil stew? Let's go give thanks for the food and for the receding waters, which give us the assurance that this flood will come to an end. Will you gather your brothers? You know, if my brothers have caught the scent of that stew, they're already on their way. <laughs> and then in chapter 8, we read, But God remembered Noah, and all the wild animals, and the livestock that were with him in the ark. And he sent a wind over the earth, and the waters receded. Now the springs of the deep and the floodgates of the heavens had been closed, and the rain had stopped falling from the sky. The water receded steadily from the earth, and at the end of the 150 days, the water had gone down. It said all the fountains of the great deep burst forth, and then, after 150 days, the springs of the deep closed. That's right. You got it. Does springs of the deep mean the water came out of the ground? That's exactly what it means. Rain poured out of the sky, and immense jets of water came out of the ground. How can water come out of the ground? Uh, have you ever heard of a geyser? Isn't that a really old man? That's a geyser, Harold. <laughs> Unless you're in Iceland. There, geysers are called geysers. Now I'm really confused. What's new? Hey! <laughs> you see, a geyser is a hot spring that sends up jets of water or steam, like a fountain. No way a geyser could flood a mountain. Well, first of all, mountains didn't exist. What? They didn't exist? Well, the flood caused the Earth's crust to shatter into what we call tectonic plates. When those plates smashed into each other, they formed the high mountains we see today. So the flood didn't have to cover anything as tall as, say, Mount Everest, did it? Not even close. And it wasn't just one geyser. 
The Bible says the fountains of the deep, remember? So how many were there? Well, we don't know. Uh, there are more than 500 geysers alone in Yellowstone National Park. So just imagine how many could have opened up all over the earth. They were undoubtedly a lot more powerful than Old Faithful. Old what? Old Faithful, the most famous geyser in Yellowstone. It shoots up 8,000 gallons of boiling water into the air, an average of 145 feet high. And it does it approximately every 90 minutes. <laughs> you have to go see it. Yay, field trip to Old Faithful. Not in the budget, Harold. Ah. Uh, I have another question. Uh, unfortunately, Lily, I don't have time for more questions. I was hoping to talk about the geologic column, but if I don't get outside to help with that retaining wall, my name's gonna be Mud. <laughs> it's already Mud. <laughs> Good point, Lily. Rich, if I can talk the work crew into sharing you, will you come back tomorrow for another assembly? DS, if you get the okay from Stan and John, then you've got yourself a deal. We're going to take a short break, but don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Hey, I'm Ruben Gomez, executive producer and the voice of Jacob P. Donovan. Do you want to hear all new episodes of Jake's Take, an oddcast you can trust? Sign up to become a Mountaineer and then listen to this exclusive club program and other new content every week. Mountaineers, we'll see you in the clubhouse at discoverymountainclub.com. We'll be waiting for you! Hey, it's Sean Boonstra, Speaker Director of The Voice of Prophecy. Has Discovery Mountain been an encouragement to the children in your life? Weekly Discovery Mountain episodes are made possible through the generosity of our supporters. Would you like to join us as a supporter? Call us at 1-877-566-7365. Let's head outside the academy and see how the work crews are coming along with the repairs. It's about time you guys got here. Oh, sorry, Stan. The assembly took longer than we thought. Yeah, sorry. The kids had lots of questions. <laughs> Especially Lily. <laughs> She's a little thing, but boy, is she tough. Oh, yeah. It will be a challenge to keep a step ahead of her. Huh. I might need to brush up a little. I wouldn't want to take my knowledge of the geologic column for granite. Oh, did you just make a geology pun? Uh, puns are the bedrock of geology jokes. <laughs> <laughs> my sediments exactly. Not you too, DS. <laughs> now, where do you want me, Stan? Far away from me. Go help John Harris over there. He's digging the trench for the retaining wall foundation. Great. I really dig trenches. Uh, go. What about me, Stan? I have class in a couple of hours, but I'm yours till then. The Peabody's are putting tarps up to protect Mrs. Lewis's room from any more water damage. Why don't you go give them a hand? Sure, I'm on it. We've got to hurry because this break in the weather isn't going to last long. It isn't? I was hoping we were over the worst of it. There's another big storm heading our way. We've only got two days to finish the retaining wall, install the drains, and rebuild the classroom wall before we get a lot more rain and risk another mudslide. Oh, two days? We need more volunteers and equipment to get it done. We need more than that. We need a miracle. Yay, school's out. Now you can finally go on a field trip, Harold. To your house. Very funny, Janet. For your information, I'm headed to Logan's. Isn't Logan's house that direction? Yeah, just across the soccer field. Oh, I guess that does make it a field trip. <laughs> I'm headed home to see the Defender X5000. Defender X5000? Is that a new video game? It's my dad's latest scheme to defeat the forces of nature. <laughs> Sounds like fun. See ya. See ya. Addison, wait. What's up, Carson? That's exactly what I was going to ask you. What's up with Cyrus and Brianna? You mean their argument during assembly? Not just that assembly. They've been bugging each other all day. I don't think Cyrus approves of Brianna staying neutral about the whole Noah's Flood thing. I haven't made up my mind about it either, but there's one thing I do know. I don't like them picking at each other like that. I know, me neither. You don't think this will ruin their friendship, do you? I hope not. <laughs> Ruining a friendship over some story? But it's more than just a story, isn't it? 
It does really matter whether we believe it or not. Uh, I don't know. It's all pretty new to me. Maybe I'll ask Chaplain Jake about it in Bible class tomorrow. Great idea. Addison? Oh, hello, Lily. Are you working at the library today? Yes, I'm headed there now. I need every book you've got on the geologic column. Oh, uh, okay. Elsie and I can help you find some. All of them? Yes, ma'am. I'll be there in 15 minutes. Luke, get back here. That's my backpack. <laughs> Whoa, that kid is intense. Carson, can you stay after school to help clear mud and debris for Mrs. Lewis's classroom? Uh, isn't that Stan guy in charge? Yes. Do you have a concern? Carson has a concern with Stan's dog. Look, we could use your help no matter what you think of Diesel. There's another storm coming in just two days. We have to get this job done before there's another mudslide. Addison! Someone told me you work at the library. I sure do. Great. I need a good reference book on the geologic column. Oh, sorry. Someone beat you to it. She requested every book we've got on the subject. Every book? Oh no, Lily! There's a lot of anxiety in Discovery Mountain today, isn't there, Director Doug? <laughs> Indeed. Steve Beckman is worried about being prepared for another disaster. Addison's worried about Cyrus and Brianna. Oh, and Carson's worried about Diesel. <sighs> Right. And Rich is worried about what Lily is planning. And yes, well, he's worried about another storm coming. Well, we all go through times when we're not sure what's going to happen next. Absolutely. But like Noah, we have to have faith that God will lead us. You know, it reminds me of Isaiah 54, 9 to 10. Oh, what do those verses say? Well, that passage says, Just as I swore in the time of Noah that I would never again let a flood cover the earth, so now I swear that I will never again be angry and punish you. For the mountains may move and the hills disappear, but even then my faithful love for you will remain. My covenant of blessing will never be broken. Wow, so the mountains may move and the hills disappear? <laughs> part of the hill disappeared behind Discovery Mountain Academy, didn't it? It sure did. But God's love for us never will. Yeah. God promises that His promise will never be broken. That's something we can exercise our faith by. Well, it is. Lily and Rich are both studying tonight for a potential showdown. <laughs> we'll find out what happens next time. We'll see you here then. You've been listening to Discovery Mountain, where the air is clear, clear enough to hear your imagination, and where every day is an exercise in faith. To listen to other episodes and to send us a message, visit us online at discoverymountain.com. Discovery Mountain is a production of The Voice of Prophecy. Join us again next time here in Discovery Mountain, where every day is an exercise in faith. Animal Ark was written by Janice Nelson and post-produced in Ontario, Canada by Douglas Bruce and Danny Columbi. Recorded in Loveland, Colorado, Bowmanville, Ontario, and remotely from around the world. <laughs>